Good morning. For many people, the promise of health still belongs to the future. Maybe in 20 or 50 years, everyone will have their DNA sequenced and will be able to use this information to prevent and cure diseases. Maybe in 20 or 50 years, every people in the world will have access to basic health care, independent if they come from a developing or a developed country. But what if I tell you that maybe the promise of health is not that far away? What if I tell you that actually I already saw it happening six years ago? When I was 21, I was diagnosed with cancer. And although many believe that young people, they're always healthy and they don't need a lot of preventive tests, I was lucky to have a doctor that thought that preventive care should be part of our entire lives. So I was diagnosed at a very early stage. After a successful surgery, my doctors did very detailed analysis about my disease and they could find the best treatment to what I needed. So what is very impressive about this story is that because of this detailed analysis that I have been gone through, I only had to go through one round of chemotherapy. More impressive, it only took me three months from the day I was diagnosed to the day I received the news from my doctors that I was 100% cured. By the way, did I mention to you that this all happened in Brazil, an emerging country? Now, we know that in this story I was a winner because I had access to the most uh, developed and advanced treatments in my country. But unfortunately, not all the Brazilians or not many other people in the world, they have access to this kind of treatment. But w what we want to show you today is that the promise of health is not that far away and that with business solutions, we can actually accelerate this process. So thinking about the promise of health, we looked at large organizations, at think tankers, to see what they believe is the true promise of health. According to the World Health Organization, the promise of health is not only related to the absence of diseases, it's also related to a holistic view on well-being. According to Jimmy Carter, the former US president, the promise of health is related to individual empowerment and the idea that today we know much more, we're more aware and responsible about our own health conditions. But according to Walter Conkrite, a famous American journalist, the promise of health is still faces a lot of challenges. Now, when we think about the challenges in healthcare, there is a myriad of ideas and concepts that comes to our minds. But during this presentation, we're going to focus on the two ultimate challenges to healthcare, which are affordability and availability. Now, when we think about these two concepts, it's, impo it's important to take two different perspectives towards developed and emerging countries. Because what we see in developed countries is the, our healthcare systems that are based on universal care, where everyone has access to basic care. But what is happening in these countries is that they are facing a lot of pressure from the rising trend of costs in healthcare, which is becoming unsustainable. So they're facing pressures towards affordability. In the, in the emerging countries on the other side, we find normally systems that are self-paid, where the patients, they have to pay for their own treatments. And in these countries, the pressure is different, is towards availability and the idea that more people should have access uh, to healthcare. So the way we see for these countries to overcome these challenges and these pressures is to, uh, it's through improved performance. And why do we think about performance? Well, because today, still, the healthcare systems, they are mostly focused on providing treatments to cure diseases, while actually their focus should be on improving the performance and the outcome of such treatments. Because it's only through improved performance that they could increase the availability of healthcare services at lower costs. And now Rob will expand this concept to you. So, we talked about availability and affordability, and now we want to understand how we get from there to performance. So what did we learn from Bia's story? We learned that it all starts with measurement. 
we looked at how her doctor did preventive tests to understand like how her profile, like the biomarkers, everything, that they could know and that they could define the best treatments for her. So it started from measurement. From there, innovation, because they knew this complete profile from her. They could have the most targeted treatments, the best effective solutions. It only took her a month to leave the hospital. Then value capture. So who is the winner? Who gets the money from this? At the end, everybody was a winner. The doctor had better solutions. You had the insurance company who had to pay less. You had the patient in the end, who was the ultimate winner. But how do we get from this value capturing to availability and affordability? How can we make this loop even go faster? That's where we think that performance contracting is going to be the new key. It's already mentioned during one of the presentations from yesterday. It's like when, are we, when we're going to link outcome with treatment and not just looking at different solutions like different chemical components that can potentially help and potentially not. We're going to look at things that really that know, that we know that we're going to work for sure. That's going to close this loop. Is this a far-fetched story or is this already starting to happen? We see a lot of innovations already that play on this, that could really connect everything together within this whole ecosystem of, uh, of healthcare. So we talked about the producer. The producers like medical devices, uh, pharma companies, they are working on precision medicine. And in order to not to make it too heavy, I'll try to make a story around all the, uh, the other ones and how we can connect them. So we have the providers, hospitals, we have, uh, we have doctors. And how can those change with medical tourism, for example? So come on a journey with me. Let's go to Turkey. It sounds very appealing, right? Like you're laying on the beach. You have like, uh, you, you're, you're looking there. You see the guy passing with the ice creams. You decide like, hey, why not have an ice cream? You're enjoying this ice cream with the sea right in front of you. Half an hour later, the same guy passes again. This time, he's offering medical treatments. He's, he's the dentist. He's he knows how much sugar you've been eating. And he basically wants to, he wants to close that loop. But it doesn't stop there. Then we go to the insurer, who now also knows that you've been eating that ice cream, and who basically wants you to get rid of all the bad impact that this can have. They're experimenting with game therapy. Game therapy, far-fetched, you're already doing it probably. With the Nike Plus apps on your, on your wrist, you're already competing with your, uh, with your peers, with people that you know, just to become healthier, to become even fit. Then governments, because then the issue was, of course, like you're in Turkey, your insurance provider is in, uh, is in any country that you might be living in. How do you connect it to? We're looking at da global data standards to make sure that everything connects with each other. And then finally, we have the patient. Because if you still don't know what the fuss of this ice cream was about, this medical device is going to tell you. It's your wearable tracking device. Now, you still need to give in into the tool, like what you've been eating and uh, how much calories it had. In the future, you don't even have to do that anymore. This device that you see there, it screens your blood. It knows the components that you have, it gives you suggestions based on this, based on the nutritional value that you have in your blood at any time. But then, these are all small scale solutions, very futuristic. How can we really scale these up? How can they be created into a hype? A hype that is really going to transform this whole industry. So we looked at three different sources of disruption. First, we looked at an operational point of view. Where we, think that system where, where we think that operational improvements can still uh, go far away. We look at how we can redesign our current processes and make them more efficient and reduce loss. The second part is systems. Systems, like I mentioned before, is how does everything connect with each other? How do we make sure that our devices communicate with our insurers? How, how do we create this ecosystem? And then finally, society. We look at a case which starts from the individual, how the individual is going to demand a different type of healthcare. We'll walk you now through those three scenarios. So when we think about improved performance through operations, we think that the case of a chain of hospitals in India called LifeSpring is a very good example. Because what was happening in India was that they still faced really high levels of pregnancy-related death. 
100,000 mothers would die each year because they didn't have access to basic care. And this rate is six times higher than we see in China, for example. So what LifeSpring did was to create a new business model where they could provide maternal care at lower cost and still reaching mothers that are in the most remote areas of India. To do this, uh, and to give you some examples, what they did was to create, for example, medical hubs where they would centralize their most uh, important and valuable resources, like doctors and equipments, and use them as a factory, optimizing their utilization and lowering their costs. They also used new technologies like telemedicine, telecommunications in medicine, so that they could reach out to those mothers without having, in the most remote areas specifically, so that without having to set infrastructure and invest <coughs> in each and every village in, in, in India. So through this, LifeSpring managed to provide healthcare at prices sometimes 10 times cheaper than what was the average in India. So what we want to do today during our workshop is to look at cases like the one we just saw in India and in other emerging markets and how they can evolve in the future to a scenario that we call Mumbai Medical and the idea of reverse innovation that maybe in the future the new trends and the new technologies in healthcare they will not only be imported from developed to emerging countries but that this can actually happen on the other way around that emerging markets will be transferring their new trends and techniques to developed countries. Okay. And to start with the second scenario, I have a question. It might be a little bit of an embarrassing question, but I hope you co uh, cooperate. Who has been Googling their symptoms when they had a disease? Like who has been going online and checking out on Wikipedia and anywhere else, like what it could potentially be? Okay, that's a lot. Who thought he was going to die afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, for us it might all seem very straightforward because we're using computers on a daily basis. But I can tell you, two weeks ago I realized like how revolutionary this really is. My mom started self-diagnosing herself on the internet and went to her doctor and said like, hey, I think I have this. My mom, 65 years old, doesn't have a mobile phone, like barely opens her notebook. So you can really see, I truly believe this is going to disrupt the world. But then where do we start from, the, from, the, from here in this scenario? With Digital Me, we start from Apple. They recently announced a whole new ecosystem that they developed, the Health Kit. It basically will enable developers to plug in new technologies that they develop into a single platform that basically connects everything. So this device is not going to be a single thing anymore. It's going to be connected with everything. You have a single interface in which you see everything. And they even think beyond this. They already think about which data you can start potentially sharing with your, with your doctor, with your insurance provider. They already build this in, into this whole system. So in this scenario, Digital Me, we're going to look at how we get from this new ecosystem in, in, uh, in, in mobile phones, how we can get this to global education of healthcare. How you have a fully empowered society in which when you go to a doctor, it's not just uh, you asking him what he thinks. It becomes a dialogue because you know yourself very well. Um, yes, and that's it. <laughs> yes, and now the third scenario that we will analyze also today during our workshop is related to improved performance in healthcare to s through systems and networks. And for this, we're going to look at the case of Kaiser Permanente, a very avant-garde uh, healthcare group in the US that is very much focused on quality and efficiency. And for this, again, they are developing new business models focusing on their systems and networks. So for the networks, they are partnering with insurance and drug providers to customize the treatments that they can provide and to be more efficient towards their patients. In terms of systems, they are now discussing a partnership, again with Apple, to use the iHealth kit in all their patients and obtain and track their data in a very constant base. So what we're going to analyze in this, uh, for this case and for this scenario is what we imagine in the future as the cloud clinic, 
when more examples of this mass digitalization of medical data will happen and then will be storage in this universal database that every stakeholder in the healthcare system will have access. Every patient, every doctor, every insurer, they will be able to access this information and evolve the healthcare as a, as a whole. So, from the three scenarios, you've seen that our imagination is limitless. So, but how does this translate to your industry? What is the type of workshop we want to have with you? We don't just want to talk about healthcare. We want to talk about industry transformation and what you, can pick, uh, what you can take away from the examples that we gave. For example, Mumbai Medical, reverse innovation, and the other ones, big data and mass, cu mass customization. We'll walk you in further detail through the scenarios and the drivers and challenges between, uh, behind each of them and the key success factors that you need to reach to be successful. So we invite you to our workshops, like everybody else did so far. And uh, we promise you a healthy discussion and even maybe an ice cream. <laughs> <laughs>